the Apple Watch and the Garmin Watch have this metric called VO2 Max. So today we're gonna go to the special sports lab with my friend and test to see how accurate are the numbers on the Apple Watch. You get to see the stuff you don't see in the mirror. It's an early 5.30 a.m. 25 degrees outside, that is Fahrenheit. It's below freezing with a minus three, minus five Celsius. Shervin signed me up to do some tests. Let's take a one jet in here. <sighs> Let's go. For Shervin. All right. To be honest with you, I don't even really know what this test is. All I know is I'm being hooked up to some mask and I'm running until I can't run anymore. Oh, and they're pricking blood from my fingers. Shervin, you signed me up for all these random tests. I'm thankful, I'm grateful. I feel like you make me do things that most people won't, but this has got to be the scariest one for me. Thanks. Thank you. Now, what is VO2 max, you might ask? VO2 max stands for volume, oxygen, and maximum. So that essentially means the maximum amount of oxygen that your body is able to intake and use. So. I think the theory is that the more oxygen that you're able to intake, then the more oxygen you're able to put in your muscles, and the faster you're able to be. And Peter T also talks about how VO2 max is a great metric for longevity. Top 2.3% of the population for VO2 max have the lowest mortality. So not only is it good for performance, but longevity. So today we want to figure out how accurate is the Apple Watch and the Garmin compared to a special lab. In this place they have this equipment that's like more expensive than a Tesla. So <laughs> hopefully it's accurate. And we're gonna see what are the numbers compared to this little thing on my wrist that's only a couple hundred bucks. Now a big part of this test is not we're not supposed to consume calories before we do the test. She said ideally no caffeine, but typically do we run with caffeine? So it was like kind of disputed. So I had no caffeine, no calories. I've been fasted. The last time I ate was like 8 p.m. last night. I had a nice big ice cream as well as Burger King. I know it's not healthy. Okay, don't judge me. But we are here to do the test, and now I'm just waiting for my friend. Let's see if he's here. If he's still my friend, who knows? I hate you, Sherman. Oh, look who it is. <laughs> but the both of us have decided to run a half marathon in freezing February. Oh, I thought you were meant right now. I thought you were oh. meant, both of us have agreed to run a half marathon for the test right now. And he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been telling them on this that you signed me up for something. And Which you have no you're, idea. You're, I know that I'm hooked up to a mask. I know we're running until like basically failure. And they're pricking blood from us. Oh what yeah. Is, like, what are we doing? <laughs> oh yeah, so I forgot about that part. We're also doing blood lactate testing. So they will be taking our blood every time we increase the speed on the treadmill. I'm nervous. They're running harder and harder, progressively harder, and there's blood being pricked from us. And there's a little jump shoot on the back. So if you do pass out, you can just really? fall off the treadmill. No, I don't know, but there are some places uh. that do do that. Hi, I'm Hello. Polly. Hi, Polly, how's it going? Oh my God. Look at you in shorts in this freezing I know, what are you Is it? Isn't it still summer? No. <laughs> okay, come on. Actually, I don't know, I think you can check in here. Check in here? I'm kind of scared of the blood pricking. How's that going to be? Well, you know, if you don't like it, you can always, everything's voluntary. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. So now, who's going first? You should go first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now you've never done this, right? Now, okay. as, as you can tell, there's someone who's physically fit and someone who's not very fit. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm here to beat him. I don't know how I'm going to beat him, but I'm here to beat him. Okay. This is not a competition. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, man. Why? I like numbers, but numbers also scare me, but it's in a good way. It's in a good way. I yeah. need to be scared. I also like... What are you, you're scared of seeing your numbers again in the comments? <laughs> Nah, I could care less. But for 22 <laughs> years, I didn't know any numbers, and now that I'm learning them, it's the, the fear of the unknown. Uh, you know? I'm very excited. <laughs> so basically, the goal here is that we kind of look at, you know, what happens to you when you go from being in a completely comfortable, like you do it forever pace, sure. all the way up to where you're gonna, you know, you have to stop. <laughs> okay. Alright, how are you feeling? Gassed. <laughs> <laughs> Already. So the treadmill will increase in speed by about 0.4 miles an hour every pay, every four minutes. Okay. okay. Feeling good? Yep. Race pace. <laughs> I used to be a swimmer growing up. I wonder if I'd be a good triathlete. Totally good Try it. You'll be running along at the end of a four minute stage. You'll say, okay, you're gonna get up in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. You'll be running along, you put your hands here, pop off. Three, two, pop off. Okay. Drop your hand to your side. I'll take a little finger stick sample for lactate. Relax your hand. Yes. Okay. 
okay. and give you a piece of gauze. You'll hold it like that. Okay, just give this a nice squeeze. You can just hold on, get a feel for the paper. <laughs> Start running and I'll take you to the next page. Okay. It's getting hard, huh? <laughs> the next page is a seven oh four eight. I believe in you. <laughs> when we're done, you'll understand why it's a four minute stage, but it, it okay. takes at least three minutes for the lactate that you create in your muscles to efflux out into your bloodstream okay. to get an accurate lactate. But it also, you'll see when you look at the data, it kind of it takes your body a few minutes to kind of settle into sure. whatever pace, um, yeah. whatever workload, <clears throat> and, and in order to determine like how many calories you're burning, where you're pulling the calories from, you need a decent amount of time at each pace. At each stage, I will be asking you how you're feeling. Come on. So this would this would be like literally sleeping, lying okay. in bed. Okay. Yeah. This would be almost that, <laughs> like okay. sitting in a chair. So using we mean a mouse. easy. Okay. Here, when you get to these numbers, it's you're sweating, you're breathing harder. But if you were running with friends, you'd be talking in full sentences. You'd okay. laugh. That's four that. through six. As you go up, it's you'd be yeah. talking less and less and less and less. And then when you get here, it's like, oh, for God's sakes, how much longer? Do I <laughs> so we'll be asking you at each stage, you know, how you're feeling. You'll be wearing a heart rate monitor, and you'll have a face mask. One, two. Three. What is that one? Four. What? Five. <laughs> oh, that's the whoop. That's the whoop. How many do you have? <laughs> Does he actually check any of the data? <laughs> he just wears them. <laughs> sure, but it's a fraud. <laughs> he has also something implanted in his heart. <laughs> RFID. <laughs> Puts his phone to his heart. <laughs> and you'll have a face mask on that will be held in place by a headpiece. You were merely raised <laughs> in the darkness. I was born in it. You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it. Molded <laughs> by it. So basically, that's it's a totally voluntary. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to um, using Tejas Halur as a guinea pig for these videos to make Shervin feel better for his data. <laughs> so at the end of the test, you know, you decide when it's over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, um, you're trying to use for like, you know, training purposes. Yeah. Like, what is? Mm -hmm. What are your zones? Where are you? You know, where's exactly. there room yeah. for like, you know, are you, are you better? Is is your max a limiting factor? Do you need to work on raising that? So. I would say the, the number we get to at this is more of what I call a VO2 peak because okay. you're tired, you're getting tired. It's a lot of yeah, stages, yeah, yeah. you know, so it's not like a 10 minute test where you just balls to the walls, yeah. or, you know, it's going to be within a couple of milliliters of your max. So okay. when you're, when you're like, all right, I'm done. So basically the first thing we take a peek at is what was the most amount of oxygen that you can get into your system, deliver to your muscles yeah. and use in energy production pretty much the same in terms of how much oxygen it's going to take to do a given task, but where you differ is your end point. Mm. So that's very genetic. That's the VO2 um, max. Yeah, VO2 max. So I would call it max. <laughs> okay. But it also is very genetic, what your, your ability to adapt to a training stimulus. So mm. some people can have huge increases and other people are non-responders. So we look and see for you guys, where did you fall on max VO2, on peak VO2? Okay, so 20 to 29 year old guys, over 2,000 people tested, okay? okay? The average guy was at 43. You were at 45.8, so that puts you here at about the 65th, 60, 60, 70 okay. percentile. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. I'll Not take bad. that. So if we look at your group, age 30 to 39, that's 13,000 men tested on treadmills. The average guy was at 42. Oh Ooh. my God. I'm telling you, so you were up here right around 50. 50, which is about 85th oh. <laughs> Wow, look at you, man. Okay, the takeaway for you for this is that research supports, if you wanted to raise your aerobic ceiling, you need to accumulate time near it or at it. Mm. So body fat doesn't really take up oxygen, yeah. organs and muscles do. Mm. Anything that isn't moving you forward yeah. is slowing you down. Oh. Anything so that biceps, isn't moving forward. delts, traps. Uh, They'll slow me down. Uh, oh no. Uh. Okay, so unlike your heart, which you know, 
changes shape with training. <laughs> um, yeah. Your lungs are kind of your lungs, mm. but your respiratory muscles get stronger and more fatigue resistant. Okay. And you just want to see, you know, how big did you get that breath? So you can see almost up to three oh, liters what? here. Oh. <laughs> Is that good? It's, yeah, it's a big it's breath, big and then it's big ass lungs, yeah, and then, and then we, twice as size yeah, lungs yeah, that I do. So yeah, so not quite as big. Um, but, and at rest, we breathe about five liters per minute, and you just want to see that it goes up and up and up. Wow. And at the end, you were up there at 113 liters per minute in and out of those lungs. Regular folk are gonna hit about 70 to 90, and <laughs> athletes will hit over 100. So I'm an athlete. You're an athlete. <laughs> And then same here, you got up to about 95. Ooh. Yeah, so not bad at all, okay? How many calories are you burning a minute and where do you pull those calories from? So in your case, over 50% are coming out of fat. Okay, that's what we want. Here, same thing, 60%, 50%. Um, and then you start seeing it drop down. That was pretty darn good. And you were, even at the end, you were pulling from fat. You have a limited amount of carbohydrates that you can store, but you have, even the skinniest people have 50,000 calories of stored fat. Most of us have 100,000. I mean, okay. and the thing that's fun about this is that you get to see the stuff you don't see in the mirror. Uh -huh. You know, like you get to see those healthy changes. Yeah. So this is lovely. I mean, that's a great, see, you should do iron. Lovely. Um, oh, all right. <laughs> so but when you look at somebody from the back, yeah. You're looking to see what is it that is not moving them forward. Because <laughs> yeah. right. anything up and down, if you look at the lead pack in the marathon, they could have a glass of water on their head that wouldn't spill. Really? They might, yeah, they're just That's like- That's the guy with the pineapple, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like, the other thing you'd look at is, well, what are you doing with your arm? And then we look and see when you land, are you leaking power out of the hip? Also your feet, as you can see, are not going directly forward. So here's where you're looking at when you land, are you are landing under your center of gravity? Are you kind of over striding? So over a little bit. So the muscles on the side of the hips sometimes get a little weak because mm. they're not using them and that muscle kind of holds your knee in position. Uh, so if you're, oh, yeah, okay. I could show you a couple of exercises that oh. run the inside leg. Oh. Wow. So things like monster walks, you know, yeah. those type of exercises are good for like just the face. Or the bands around your knees? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. How do you feel? Dude, my mind is actually blown. Why? The fat versus carbohydrate split. So like, what calories are burning from fat or what calories are burning from carbohydrates at a certain pace was mind blowing. And then the mechanics. Yeah. At the very end, dude, my hip hurt. Really? Literally like two of those, two of those reps, I went, Oh my God. So you need to fix your mechanics. Yeah. Let's go get you signed up right now. We just finished the sports performance test here at this hospital slash sports facility. Wow, daylight. And yeah, we got here when the sun was just like, it was not here. <laughs> now, now I'm trying to learn how to walk. Again. But we're back from the lab and now we're gonna compare our lab results VO2 max versus our iPhone results. So what was your lab result VO2 max? Lab results VO2 max 45.8 milliliter per kilogram per minute. And your iPhone? 48.4. Damn, so it's literally like three off, and she said it was gonna be a few off because it's our VO2 peak. Mm. So that makes sense. My VO2 max in the lab was 49.9, and on my iPhone, 52.9. So about three about, off. About three off. Yeah, so maybe, because we weren't, I, she said I could go farther and harder, and if I did, my VO2 max value would be higher. So I don't think I pushed myself hard enough. Yeah. So on my Garmin, it says 53 as well. So the Garmin and the Apple Watch are pretty similar. Yeah, they're pretty close. It's good enough. Yeah. Like, do you really need to go in the lab and pay this much money to get this test done? Probably not. But there's so much more information that we got in this report that yeah. I think it was so worth it. Absolutely. Learning our carb to fat burning ratio, figuring out the best heart rate zones for training, like for trying to achieve a certain speed, like yeah. knowing where we're at and what we need to do to get to that end point. Yeah. Like that was extremely valuable. Absolutely. But yeah, so here are some of the cool stats that we got. This is like a couple graphs here. I think the most interesting thing for me was I did this test probably like three months ago and I pretty much had a flat line of like carbs and fats. Like I wasn't actually burning more fats at any point during that. But now that I've done a lot of zone two training, my body has shifted where I'm actually burning more fat at certain paces. Yeah. So it's really interesting to see how my body has changed just in three months of zone two training. Same thing here. And the other super interesting part, this part where she's talked about elite runners versus my values and all my values were within the elite runner range. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> he just wants to gas himself up guys. <laughs> guys, guys, I'm an elite runner, let's go. Comment go down on. below. <laughs> 
Sherbin, cool your horses, my guy. Until you run a, a mile under five minutes, I'm not gonna You're respect right. your genetics. And if you wanna see that, turn on your notifications below because that's gonna happen hopefully in the next three to five years. It's gonna take a while. <laughs> and then how did that heart rate zone compare to your Apple Watch? All the heart rate zones on my Apple Watch were actually lower than what this says. And it was actually really funny. So that's where like the heart rate zones in the Apple Watch, I don't know how much I would trust that because mine was obviously different and I've been very diligent on setting custom zones based on these lab tests. Should I set custom zones now? Yeah, do it. Go to heart rate zones, change it from automatic to manual. Perfect. Yeah, what's interesting is I'm looking at my automatic zones right now and it's pretty much spot on to the lab test. It's about one heartbeat off. Since you enjoyed this video, go watch one where Tejas and I went and tested our body fat using a DEXA scan versus this Apple Watch band linked right here.